and uh, people in the, in the Five Life team think I'm mental because uh, I haven't been here from two o'clock this afternoon and uh, it's now quite late. Um, it's going to be midnight actually in Russia. Yeah, I think it is. And uh, 10 o'clock in the UK, I'm still broadcasting. So I'm in the, uh, what they call it, the green room yeah. of uh, where they keep the stars before they go into uh, the uh, television sets or the radio shows. Let me show you, it's not massive. That's it. That's all. So, uh, in fact, if you bear with me, I'll close it up. Hold on. Feels a bit more private that way, doesn't it? Anyway, um, Spain, all oh, this, we suffered, didn't we? That was the first thing to say. Uh, it wasn't enjoyable, as I said in Five Life. Um, basically, my notes were we didn't attack very well the first half, we didn't attack very well the second half. Sorry, we didn't defend very well the second half, and we didn't control the game when we had to. So, um, plus, I see two things, and this is, uh, this is going to be a little bit controversial, see if you agree with me. Two things that are uh, worrying. One, the uh, hair seems lacking confidence. Uh, he doesn't come out of the box in a domineering way as he can do. He prefers to stay uh, in the goal line. In fact, the, uh, the thing that he's very good at is his instinctive responses, but in the disallowed goal or in the VAR incident, um, which was uh, rightly uh, pointed out as uh, confirmed as, uh, as offside, it, the ball went through his legs. Now, that's not the usual. Uh, I think he's actually much better than we are seeing. He is much better than we are seeing. Certainly at Manchester United, he intervenes more. In Spain, you have to be really focused and uh, uh, because you perhaps have got only two or three chances to show how good you are. Uh, and we don't see one that is uh, De Gea that is determined uh, and, and saves Spain if need be. I don't see that that kind of the hair right now, but I think I started wrongly and I should have I should start all this uh, because to be honest, it, uh, we won. But the first thing to say should have been that it had worked fantastic. Um, a lot of people have criticized the way they wasted time in the first half, especially the fact that they um, felt injury a little bit. But I just see it in a completely different way. Uh, there was a moment in the first half in which Sergio Ramos goes to Queiroz like What's this? Why do you play like this? Um, and uh, and Kedos went like, you know, probably he was saying, just give me Iniesta and Silva and Costa and then we will play differently. So Iran were very good. Let's stay in the first half. We're very good in slowing things down, in stopping Spain getting the, 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 the rhythm, uh, the word that, the, that we say uh, to describe that when, when the team is in the flow, you know, when, when when you feel comfortable, when you want the ball and pass it and, and there's movement and there is pace, there was none of that and it was because of Iran. In that 6-4 nil formation that they put in practice. And why not? You are That was the challenge, that was always the challenge. So it was about, okay, can you show as a Spain what you've got? And what Spain had were a new right wing with Carvajal and Lucas Vázquez with the idea, of course, of number one, create superiority in wide areas uh, Silva will add to them too and try to combine there uh, also to get Lucas Vázquez running in behind but there was not much space to run in behind uh, because Spain did not move the ball very very quickly uh, it happened the same in the, in the left hand side Jordi Alba couldn't get in behind because there was no space to get in behind so when that happens you have to ball, move, move the ball quickly from side to side and wait for the space to appear but I'm going to say the second controversial thing uh, because Dean Purcell just mentioned something I was about to say. He says, Isco really impressed. And I think Isco is a problem. Uh, why am I saying that? Spain, if we want to play not tiki-taka, which is what Spain plays a lot, uh, which is possession for possession, passing for passing, keeping the ball for keeping the ball in an even conservative way, 
if you want to play the the possession the pos positional football that Barcelona play that Iniesta plays that Silva plays um, you need you cannot do what Isco does keeping the ball and then move with the ball from side to side not passing and moving but driving the ball because what that does is that tracks defenders makes life easy and in fact if you realize at the end of the game if you look at the running stats Iran run just one kilometer more than Spain I think it was just one so we had to run a lot in the positional uh, game if it really works where everybody has got a position and, and stays in that position and the ball moves not so much the players then there is not so much need to uh, to run so it's not that Isco doesn't suit the tiki taka somebody just mentioned there it's actually that Isco makes Spain play tiki taka and what we should actually aim for is a different brand of football it happens the same with Coque is there it happens the same with Diego Costa up front I will put Iago Aspas in and that's a philosophical discussion it won't take place of course uh, I think you've seen with the substitutions of Hierro that he prefers Lucas Vázquez or Coque and Costa staying in the team that taking it into more the positional game that would be Iniesta and Silva and Iago Aspas perhaps and Thiago uh, Jamie Ken just mentioned Thiago to Barca. Yes, they will try to convince him and they will try and buy him, interestingly enough, are selling, but we're not talking about that right now. Um, so a team with Thiago, uh, with Thiago Aspas, with uh, Iniesta, with Silva, that will actually be uh, my preferred choice and more the football that Spain should play with the other guys, with, with uh, Coque, with Isco, with Diego Costa. There's a mixture, there's like two teams playing at the same time. The fact is, though, uh, Spain has got enough quality and, of course, um, we will create the chances and, um, and you know, we may go far, but we will go far with two Spains into one. Uh, that was the first half. The second half, we started really well. We, we put a pace up and, uh, as a consequence, even though first there was a chance by, by Iran, as a consequence, we got the accidental goal. And, um, and after that, as it happened against Portugal, we, uh, Moisavas, we'll go into uh, Portugal, Iran in a minute, but uh, first, um, as a consequence, or after the goal, we actually started losing possession. Uh, there was once Carvajal, a couple of times is, uh, Iniesta, and uh, we did not do the other thing that we were very good at normally, but we haven't been able to do in this World Cup regularly enough or effectively enough. Oh, I'm getting all blurred. I'm back on. Um, which is, and I'll tell uh, we'll go about, talk about VAR later if you want, but uh, which is pressure high. We don't have pressure high regularly enough and effectively enough. And it's down to a team that has played a lot of minutes uh, that at the throw in, yeah, that was quite funny. Um, that is not physically at his best, perhaps, or sharp enough to actually make it effective. That pressure high, which is absolutely crucial, because if there is no pressure high, then we get attacked. Uh, there is spaces, people attack them, and then when the ball gets into the box, we're not the best one at defending either. So, hence the other three chances by Iran, who were fantastic, and I think. Iran will make life difficult to a Portugal that depends completely, totally, on a Cristiano Ronaldo, who, interestingly enough, started the first half today against Morocco uh, in behind Gedesh or next to Gedesh, wanted to actually uh, play the ball a bit more and assist, ended up the second half being the number nine. That really should be <coughs> his role. Uh, <coughs> sorry. That really should be his role. Uh, as a number nine, because you've seen how he is effective. One touch man to finish the moves, two set pieces, a free kick and a penalty. That's the four goals that he scored. Not down to the football that they were creating, Portugal were creating, but the, down to the fact that he was so sharp getting today um, into that ball before Morocco reacted. He was so sharp, he moved the Costa, didn't he? Just made, made a move and lost the centre back. And then he was there just uh, finishing the move. Cristiano Ronaldo, out of all people, it was him finishing that uh, that corner that was obviously um, uh, tra trained uh, or you, well, 
you say, uh, tested him, trained first, short corner, ball in, and he left the uh, left the uh, centre back for dead. But there was not much more from Portugal. Morocco were very good, uh, not defending that set piece, but uh, really um, they weren't very effective up front. Uh, but they 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 build very well. They pass very well, and perhaps yes, uh, it's one of the best teams to ever have. Uh, been knocked out after just two games, so that's uh, that's a little bit of Portugal. That's a bit of a bit of Spain. Uruguay were interesting. Um, I crossed paths with uh, Forlan, and the question was easy: Do you enjoy that kind of football in which you don't have the ball? It doesn't matter who you're playing against. It could be Saudi Arabia. You just hand the ball to them, and for 90 minutes you just run after the ball. And the answer is yes. That's what they made of. They're very good in both boxes. They had eight midfielders. They played with eight midfielders in two games, which means that they don't give that much importance to it. Uh, I think at the beginning, the plan for Tavares was to get a Uruguay that control a bit more. Uh, quality in the midfield is gone back to uh, uh, Cebolla Rodriguez and Carlos Sanchez, more tested and veterans uh, who, you know, he knows what he's going to get from them and who are happy playing that kind of style. They're strong in both boxes with perhaps the two centre-backs in the competition with Godin and uh, and uh, Jimenez and perhaps the best partnership up front with Luis Suarez and uh, and Cavani. So Argentina tomorrow and uh, uh, Argentina seem to be playing with uh, three at the back. Yet another change. I know that San Paoli has never repeated his eleven. Uh, the problem with Argentina is certainly not Messi, but it's the way they build up. Uh, the way everything is predictable, the way nobody takes responsibility. I think Di Maria is going to be out of the team uh, and Pavon will start. It seems, uh, let's see who they played uh, next to Mascherano. Uh, if Mesa plays, if, it's going to be some, some decisions that have to be taken and uh, it will be based on the idea that or against the team they're playing against, but also to try to improve a little bit more or get uh, better alliances in the midfield with Messi. Uh, Messi, I saw it and uh, I did for 45 minutes a uh, close-up marking of Messi and uh, I think I lost like 400 followers doing that um, but I tried to um, explain what, what was happening with Messi because of course when you watch the, um, the full game or the game on the television you don't see the particulars happening and, uh, and to be honest uh, the, the, the following Messi was interesting because you could see his frustration from minute 10 after 10 minutes. Dybala should be starting, Jem, Jem is saying. Well, Jemmy, the problem with that is that uh, he's very much like Messi. And every time they played him, they played them together, he hasn't worked. It's important what you've done with the national side when you've been given opportunities. But at the same time, I know Messi thinks that he, he doesn't... Um, his thinking is, if you have good players, play them because they will understand each other. It's just that that relationship in particular has not been developed and it'll be a little bit of improvising. But it sounds like uh, there's a little bit of improvising happening with Argentina anyway. Frustrating, uh, because uh, the pressure is on Messi. Uh, I said something in Five Live, which I'll repeat here. Just after the, um, the penalty was missed, a top manager in the world messaged me saying, Messi needs uh, psychological help. What he was trying to say is that Messi actually took his uh, took the penalty on his safe side, so he took it on the uh, with obviously left foot and uh, went into the right hand side of the goalkeeper, his safe side, and he wasn't very strong. So all in all, um, it was it was a sign perhaps of pressure beating him. And the thing about Messi is that he's got a volution, the, the 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 emotional volume very low, and uh, I, I, I normally he doesn't get affected, but he feels like. You know, at 30, he may just be feeling a little bit of the pressure for Argentina that understands what's happened to them in the last four years as a failure. They think that they failed when actually they've been in three finals. Twice they've been, they lost it in penalty shootouts, one in extra time. That should have been seen as a, as a success. Think of it, forget about Argentina, think of it. Any other side that had done that uh, actually would have been happy with that. Not Argentina, the field had failed and a lot of people blame him instead of congratulating him for having taken the side to finals, they blame him. So all in all, it is a, a context in which he's not enjoying 
uh, perhaps the football in the way that he should, and he's putting, he, he tries it, uh, tries too hard. Let's see what happens in the next game, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them tomorrow. Um, and there is so much more that we could talk about, uh, but I think we could uh, we could leave it here for now. Uh, and and now I'm just gonna go and relax. It's the time to do that. It's late. It's a quarter past midnight. But if you actually walk that way and cross over the bridge and then go on the left hand side, there's a road with bars and you, I'll meet some of the BBC people that are there, ITV people as well and uh, and so on. So let me just do that for a while. It's been a long day and uh, we'll talk more tomorrow. Okay, Ryan Ladd, that's the shout, that's the shout for you. See you later. Good night. Bye-bye. Now, I must remember how to switch this off. Oh, this is the way. Cheers. Bye-bye.